Hello everyone, welcome to Walking in the Word on Wednesday. Uh, I am your host, Pastor Derek Searles, the Senior Pastor of the New Life Christian Center Church and its ministries located here in the beautiful city of Pensacola, Florida. This is our online ministry. We want to welcome you on today. Uh, we thank God for the members of the New Life Christian Center Church and the partners and friends, those of you that have chosen to walk alongside of us and to partner with us as we share the Word of God uh, with the people of God that they grow stronger in the Lord. We thank God for you. This is the Elevate Faith broadcast where we know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We want to thank God for each of you tuning in on today and uh, let somebody know we're on the air. And if you don't mind, please like and share. And if you have not subscribed at YouTube, please do so today. Pastor Derek Searles dot TV. Derek is D-A-R-R-A-K and S-C-U-R-L-E-S. If you go to YouTube, you'll find us. Please subscribe on today. Thank you so kindly. We want to welcome our Facebook audience, our YouTube audience, our Instagram live audience. We want to welcome you to our broadcast on this evening. Been a great day. We honor the Lord. We thank God for each of you on today. And uh, what God is doing is amazing. And we just give him all the glory, honor, and praise. Let's pray and we're going to get right into the word. Father, we just bless your name on today. Thank you for your love, kindness, all your tender mercies. Thank you, God, for being so good to us. Right now, Holy Spirit, direct us in the word of God. Lead the way. I decrease, you increase. Anoint us for this time of service in Jesus' name. Anoint the ears and the hearts and the minds and the eyes of those hearing and looking and listening uh, that they may receive the word of God. And we thank you for it now. God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's turn to uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. Let's turn to Mark's Gospel, chapter 4. Uh, we're dealing with, on this evening, uh, the part two of our teaching from Sunday, how to Mature in the Word, How to Mature in the Word, Part 2, all right? On Sunday, we dealt with uh, maturing in the Word and the Word maturing in me, praise the Lord, or in you, all right? And on today, we're dealing with Part 2 of maturing in the Word, all right? Uh, it takes maturing in the Word to get the results that you want in your life. Uh, you have to uh, uh, take the bitter with the sweet. Now, what am I talking about? Everything in the word, uh, some things challenge us. Some things you gotta chew on for a long time. There's some things that uh, force us to make changes in our lives. So it's not always sweet, but it's working for your good. It may not feel good while it's working, but it is working for your good. Praise the Lord. And when you will accept the word and allow the word to work for you, and it will work for you because you allow it to work on you, okay? Uh, then it will take up root, it will bring forth fruit, and God's going to bless your life. <laughs> and and, and uh, you, you will just say, God is blessing me every time I turn around. God has another blessing on top of blessing for me. Praise the Lord. So we're talking about how to mature in the Word. Now, our foundational scripture from Psalms 119 and 11, would you turn there in your Bibles, uh, Psalms 119 and uh, 11. All right. And that says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. All right. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. 
the big deal in the body of Christ, um, it, it's a big deal, uh, people not maturing in the word. It, it's a problem. Um, many people live their whole lives still not maturing in the word. Why? Uh, it's not in their heart. All right. Uh, it's not in your heart. It's only top surface. It's it's has no root or depth. So it doesn't last. OK, it's momentary. We want to work that out. So I, I, I thank God you're listening and I pray you hang in here for this teaching. Let's go to Mark's Gospel, Chapter 4. All right, Mark's Gospel, Chapter 4. If we look at uh, verse number 3, um, there, 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 before we get into the scripture, there's some things um, that you may have allowed to choke the word in you. And we have to address those things. Uh, it may not be on purpose but they're choking the word. You, you're not getting the results you need. You're not getting the results you're looking for because something in your heart keeps choking out the word. Please hear me. I know this is from the Lord and the Holy Ghost. He's speaking to you right now. Um, you're wondering why it's not working the way it should. You're under great grace, okay? And by God's grace, uh, things are moving, all right? And, and, you know, but it's not where you want it to be. And you're wondering, why can't I get this thing moving forward the way that I need it to move or the blessings flowing in your life the way you need them to flow? Something is choking out the word in your heart. And the word uh, cannot function uh, where there is turmoil or confusion. All right, uh, you can't you can't get a harmony out of the word when there's a discord at the same time, or when there's confusion. The word and discord can't flow together. It, it, it it's a contradiction. Uh, the word can't flow with confusion. The word can't flow. Uh, with unforgiveness and these thorns, and we're going to get into these thorns that the Bible talks about that chokes out the word, all right? There's a reason, uh, and, and maturity in the word allows uh, your heart to be searched. It allows uh, your heart to be examined by God. So the word in you will bring the result of God that you need. Praise God. So uh, in Mark's gospel, chapter four, turn there. Verse three says, uh, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. All right. He went out to sow. He sows. All right. You can sow seed uh, for uh, money returned, but you can sow the seed of the word uh, for supernatural return, all right? So when you're sowing the seed of the word, you're speaking the word. You're speaking it audibly, out loud, out of your mouth. That's why Isaiah 55 and 11 says, so shall my word be, saith the Lord, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but will accomplish that which I please and prosper in that whereto I sent it. All right. So when you open your mouth and you speak the word, you're charging your atmosphere with the seed of the word that goes into the ground of your heart and it's going to bring forth. So why isn't it bringing forth? That's why we're teaching this on this evening. Praise the Lord. So the sower went out to sow. You're speaking the word. You're trying to get results in your life. Praise the Lord. And verse four says, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. All right. Uh, the seed of the word. All right. It fell by the wayside. All right. What does that mean? Uh, top surface only. Uh, most only received the word top surface. It, the statistics prove that uh, 72 hours after you hear the word, you forget it. 
So you have to take notes, you have to study the word, and you got to put it into your heart. That's the only way the word can be lasting is that you embrace it, you receive it, and you put it in your heart, all right? But if there's other things going on in your heart, the word ain't going to fit because it can't fit in your heart when it's full of other things, okay, that choke out the word. Who am I talking to tonight? All right, praise God. So here we see it that uh, top surface uh, uh, word study, top surface word hearing, top surface effort in the word. All right, one of the foundational scriptures we spoke of in part one was 2 Timothy 2.15, to study. It takes hours to study the word, my friends. You have to spend time with God. You have to spend hours in the word, letting that word soak in you and you soak in that word. This, this, the problem is it's only been top surface. Everybody's so busy. They want the word to work, but they won't give the word time to work. All right. Uh, I'm talking to somebody tonight. I know this word is for somebody out there because the Lord told me to say it. Verse five. And some fell on stony ground. All right, stony ground. What does that mean? It didn't have much earth, all right? Where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, all right? Uh, because it had no depth of earth. So it didn't last, all right? It did not last. Stony ground, stony ground. Dealing with the uh, a stony ground. When you, when you look at stony ground, a uh, hard heart, hard heart issues, issues of offense, issues of unforgiveness, stony, stony ground, hard ground, hard heart. The problem in the body of Christ today is so many people want to receive the word, but they have a hard heart. We got to deal with the heart, my friends. We got to deal with the offense. We got to deal with the misunderstanding. We got to deal with what's really going on in the center of you because God wants to be first place. And anything else in your heart choking out the word makes God second place and whatever else is going on, that's first place. You got to make the word first place. You got to make God first place. Amen. You cannot allow these things to uh, choke out the word. And I'm going to get there. That's verse seven. But stony ground. All right. Hard heart. Uh, issues of offense. Unforgiveness. Secret grudges. <laughs> Who out there is carrying a secret grudge uh, that nobody knows about? God looketh upon the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. But my friends, God looks on your heart, all right? It's time to be real with God and know that God wants the best for you. He wants you to work the word, but more importantly, let the word work in you. Let it work in you, all right? These secret grudges, uh, secret grudges. Come on, somebody, years in your heart. Uh, uh, and so if you've had a secret grudge against somebody, years in your heart, think about all these years the word has not been able to work in you because the word cannot work in a stony heart at the same time. A hard heart. The word cannot work in a stony heart. That's like planting seed in bad soil. All right. It's not going to produce the fruit. Praise God. All right. So uh, verse six, but when the sun was up, it was scorched because it had no root and it withered away. What is this talking about? Uh, when you're dealing with the heat of life and we know after this pandemic, oh my God, it has been, uh, there's been some heat, some heat in the workplace, uh, some heat in the economy. Uh, some some heat in medical bills and expenses, all kind of things have changed, all right? But uh, dealing with the heat of life, you got to have deep roots in you when the heat is on. Come on, somebody. You got to have deep roots of patience in you. You got to have deep roots 
to stay calm when the heat is on. You got to have deep roots of prayer to build inner strength when things are going on that you really don't understand. You got to have deep roots of faith in God so you keep standing when you don't understand what's going on around you, but you know God is yet in control. We walk by faith, amen, not by sight. And sometimes what you see is not what you want to see, praise the Lord, but you have to have roots in you. You got to have depth in you. And the way you get depth in you is through prayer. Men are to always pray and not to faint. You got to continue to get on your knees and have a little talk with the Lord every single day. You got to build this relationship. All right. That's what will give you deep roots. Praise the Lord. Now, verse seven, and some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up. So that's the problem in the body of Christ is uh, the word falling among the thorns and the thorns grew up. All right. And choked it and it yielded no fruit. You got a lot of thorns growing up in the hearts of people right in the church. Where do these thorns come from? What, what happened in your life that caused a thorny, uh, a heart, uh, a thorny soil? All right. Uh, there's some thorny situations uh, that are choking out the word. Your heart can't function uh, in harmony and discord at the same time. Uh, there must be re a replacement, all right? Uh, the replacement by the word, you, there must be a replacement to worry. You, you cannot just keep worry in your heart. Worry is not knowing if God will bring you out all right. And God brought you through that before and he's going to bring you through this right now. What are you worried about? Worry is just a matter of what you cannot see, what you cannot control. Why are you worrying? Worry is just a matter of doubt and a lack of trust in God. It will choke out the word. Hear me, hear me. Uh, fear. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. But fear is unwilling to take the next step in faith because of fear of the unknown, fear of what people say, fear of who going to go and who ain't going to go. It doesn't matter. It's all God's program. Everything belongs to God and we belong to God. Fear is choking out the word. Defeat. What are you allowing that defeat that happened into in your life years ago? Why are you allowing that to defeat you now? It's over. Unforgiveness. Let it go. Let it go. Come on, somebody. Hear me. It's stopping the word from working. <laughs> Please hear me. If, if the word can't work in your heart, then where are you going to get the fruit from? It only brings fruit because it has the opportunity to work. Uh, this is so uh, important. It's just important that you receive this word. All right. So uh, the, 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 the worry must be replaced. The fear must be replaced. All right. Defeat must be replaced. Unforgiveness must be replaced. Low self-esteem. You are somebody in God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. David said, my soul knows right well. You are somebody great in God, and God has great things in store for you. Praise the Lord. Uh, you got to let depression go. The enemy is using depression to depress you. He's using oppression to oppress you, to keep you uh, uh, down and out and discouraged. And, and not motivated to find God, all right? Get that out of your heart. But let me talk to you about something that, that's really choking out the word, and it's called anger. Uh, oh, my God, there, there must be a replacement of these things by the word in your heart. But especially after this pandemic, it seems like many have major anger issues going on presently and wonder why nothing's working. Uh, you cannot bring forth fruit with 
anger issues going on in your heart. All right. Anger is choking out the word. Check out your heart. Examine your own soil. All right. See where the thorns are. You got to see because God wants to uh, let the word work mightily in you and bring you word results, word victory, word prosperity, word healing, word encouragement, word strength. All right. Victory upon victory after victory. All right. God wants to give you a word satisfaction. He wants you to be so satisfied in his word that you eat it day and night. All right. Praise the Lord. But you got to see where the, the, the thorns are. Where, <laughs> I know you probably ain't heard this kind of teaching in a while, but where are the thorns? We got to see where the thorns are. Okay. Uh, that's why maturity in the word part two, uh, how to get the thorns out of your heart. So it does not stop the word. Praise God. Uh, this is good stuff. You got to You got to know. Amen. And so here, uh, some fell on among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit. All right. This is what I need you to see. It yielded no fruit. So if you're not yielding fruit, you got to check those thorns. All right. Check your heart. See where you're going wrong. See what's there that's not allowing the word to work mightily in your heart. All right. There's a reason if you're connected, if you're sowing, if you're praying, if you're standing in faith and you're yet not getting your miracle, you got to check them thorns in your heart. Something's going on. All right. Verse eight and other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased. God wants you to increase. All right. He wants you to increase more and more. Increase and bought forth. Come on, somebody. God wants you to bring forth. All right. God wants you to bring forth fruit. Uh, some uh, 30, some 60, even some 100. All right. It's very, very important. God wants to bring forth greatness out of you. I want you to know that tonight. God wants to bring forth greatness out of you. He's trying to bring something forth. Will you let him? He's trying to bring forth your miracle. He's trying to bring forth the victory and the healing you need. But you've got to let the word come through your soul. The spirit, your spirit is perfect. It's just like God. The word can work mightily in your spirit because ain't no problem with your spirit. But when you get to your soul, which has to be regenerated, it has to be saved. It has to be renewed. Your soul needs work. And that's why we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind every day. Uh, Romans 12 and 2 is very, very important because it's telling us, amen, not to be conformed to any aspect of the world system, but it's telling us to be renewed in our mind, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Why? Because God's trying to bring forth greatness out of you. He's trying to bring forth, but you got to have ears to hear and uh, a heart to receive. All right. Verse nine says ears to hear. All right. Let him hear. You brought forth fruit because you had ears to hear. So who has ears to hear? Let him hear. Praise the Lord. What the spirit of the Lord has to say, not reasoning, hearing. Praise God. Now, Psalms 119 and 130, if you turn there, it says, The entrance of thy word giveth light and giveth understanding to the simple. All right? The entrance of thy word giveth life. It gives hope. It gives strength. Praise God. Once the word becomes a new creature inside of you, you live, praise God, your divine nature out. It activates your divine nature. It moves you into uh, the supernatural versus the natural. Praise God. The scriptures, when they become personal to you and become a voice and it becomes you, praise God, uh, then the Holy Spirit makes it real to you. You get your result. Praise the Lord. Now, Psalms 119, 105, look at that. 
Uh, it says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. It has to give you direction in every area of your life. Praise the Lord. John 6, 63. Let's turn there. Praise God. Let's turn over to John's gospel. Amen. Uh, John's gospel, chapter 6, verse 63. All right. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Praise the Lord. So you got to stay there until you hear it. Okay. The words that I speak unto you, Jesus said, they are spirit and they are life. Stay there till you hear it. Stay there till you receive it. Stay there. Psalms 119 and 89. Turn there. Forever, O Lord. Thy word is settled in heaven. Hallelujah. It's settled. It's a settled word. It's a done word. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, Psalms 119 verse 11 uh, says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's our foundational text. Praise the Lord. And when you allow that word to abide in you, John 15 and 7. Take a look at John's gospel. Chapter 15, verse 7. This is very, very important to allow the word. If you abide in me, Jesus says, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That's how to get what you want. Allow the word to abide in you and you in the word. Praise the Lord. Now, Joshua 1 and 8. I talk about this a lot. But you make your prosperity and you make your success. Many people are praying to God about make me prosperous. Give me success. You make your prosperity. You make your success. So all your worries turn into wisdom. Praise the Lord. Therefore, wisdom becomes, praise God, uh, the, the uh, arm of hope and strength and ability. Praise the Lord. And know how. In every area of your life. Praise God. The wisdom of the word. If you hear it. If you receive it. It will cause change in your life. Praise God. Now uh, God says. Hold me to my word. And see what happens. <laughs> this is good. Hold me to my word. And see what happens. All right. Uh, John's gospel chapter 10. John's gospel chapter 10. All right. And let's look at uh, verses 27 through 30. You hold God to his word, then see what happens. It's going to work out for you. Praise the Lord. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. When you hear, when you follow, praise God, when you allow yourself to be led of God, when you allow yourself to be led, see sheep follow sheep. They, Jesus said, "My sheep know my voice." Praise the Lord. And so, when you allow yourself to be led, He said, "My Father," verse twenty nine, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Praise the Lord. So, amen, when uh, God, you hold God to his word, see what happens. Nothing can pluck you from his hand. Nothing can change his word. Praise the Lord. When you stand on it, you receive it and you believe it. Praise the Lord. So you want to operate in the testimonies of God's purpose. You want to trust God's word in every area. All right. Don't forget his instructions and don't forget his promises. Praise the Lord. The light of the word makes the light of the light of the word makes me and you the light of the world. All right. I'm out of time for this segment. Praise the Lord. But I need you to write down this last question. Do you really know how to let the word of God in your heart? All right, Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. Amen. God says, uh, I'm standing at the door 
and I'm knocking. Will you, will you let me in? Uh, he says uh, uh, here in verse uh, uh, 20 of chapter 3 of uh, the book of Revelations. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear, hear, hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he will with me. Praise the Lord. So God is standing at the door of your heart. He's knocking. Will you let him in? Praise the Lord. When you allow yourself to be led properly, you know his voice and victory is on the way. May the Lord bless you, uh, my friends. Let's get the word in our heart. Let's mature in the word. I want you to get the results of the word that God intended for you to have when Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of our sins. So let's allow the word to work in us, but we got to get the thorns out, got to check the soil, whatever's holding up the word in your heart, you got to check it out. It's time to examine your heart. All right, God bless you. Father, we thank you for the word on tonight. Thank you for the teaching. Lord, I pray that your people receive the word in their heart and that change, mighty change takes place that brings forth great victory. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you're not saved and you don't know Jesus, we want to invite you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Make him Lord over your life. It's very easy. All you got to do, amen, Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you can be saved. So if you just confess with me, the Lord Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I believe you died on the cross and rose again just for me. Right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer, 1 John 4 and 4 says, Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Would you write to us at New Life, the number 4, Y-O-U. Let us know you received the Lord. We'll get you out some information. Praise the Lord that will aid you in your walk with the Lord. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. And until my next telecast, keep walking by faith.